Nomads, Nomads, Conquerors, Seafarers. For nearly 300 years they explored, raided, and traded in such places as Asia, Europe, and the North Atlantic. The Vikings may longer rule Norway, but they are not extinct. My great-grandparents are from Sweden and Norway, and there is a tie in there. I like doing something that's a little off the beaten trail. The Viking you now see is James Robert Austin, Jim for short. Hard to believe this Seattle native would be considered a Viking. I guess because he does not have the typical fur clothing and helmet with horns. But he is one exceptional blacksmith and axe maker. For the last couple of years, I've been interested primarily in Viking Age axes. It also turns out that axes have an intense amount of blacksmithing for their size. They're very sculptural in, in essence, and I just like all of the form changing that goes on in an axe. Uh, Norwegian axes are very well uh, known for having these pronounced sharp top and bottom lobes that they call langets. Uh, the axes got a, just a beautiful form often, just with all of these tapers and transitions. A steel collisionist, clanging and banging. Anvils, hammers, tongs, and power tools. Jim uses them all. But what is his preference? I would prefer to spend as much of my time as I could doing very primitive techniques, uh, even down to making my own iron. I'd like to be able to provide a certain number of axes in the original material used by Vikings. Three decades ago, that's when Jim started his apprenticeship in Germany, making everything from gates to candle holders. This is a very special anvil. It's called the South German pattern. It was made by hand in the factory called Soding and Halbach in 1903. I brought it with me from uh, my apprentice time in Germany. This would be like my typical hand hammer. This would be the, the most basic tools. Of course, you're going to be using tongs with that, but those are in back here. This is a gas furnace. This is what you use to heat up your steel. Uh, earlier, they would have used charcoal and coal. You just pipe in gas and air, light them inside, and you get just this rolling, intense flame of gas that will basically bring your metal up nearly to the melting. We're talking about metal that's yellow hot, 2,200 degrees. Long hair and a hammer, I dare Thor to challenge me. I got the hand hammer technique. <laughs> now let me work the big machine. This is called an air hammer. This was probably designed around the year 1900, 1905. I believe that the firm was Beche in Germany. Uh, this was manufactured in the U.S. probably in the 1920s or the 1930s. And it simply pounds down onto your steel uh, so that you can do a lot of steps in your metal forming much more quickly. Tough economic times have not discouraged Jim from making axes. For about $500, you can own an authentic Viking axe. There's a demand for authenticity in things mm -hmm. and things that are connected to the past. People are more interested now, I think, than they were 30 years ago in how their ancestors made things. And everybody has a certain fascination for things made in old ways. The fact that you can even do it is interesting to people. And anybody who's followed up and, and brought these techniques back it's interesting for people to, to watch them uh, do what they do and to have something, maybe to buy something that they can take home to represent what they saw. Throat and an With eye. friend Anna this Geyers, Master Metal Molder Jim is selling set. instructional axe making DVDs. He sells them all the time. There's blacksmiths out there who want to know how things are made. He's a master and others aren't. He's an excellent source of knowledge. Blacksmiths tend to share their knowledge with each other, and that's one way to do it. The precision craftsman has now become the professor with chalkboard furnace, tong ruler, hammer pin, anvil projector. If knowledge is power, then Odin needs to watch his throne. I do teaching at the shop. I also travel to do teaching. 
right now it's, it's about axes because it's a, a topic that a lot of people are interested in. Mm. And this technique that I've kind of researched is not very well known. And I see my role eventually as being more in education than producing objects for sale. Wednesday nights are for weapons and welding. The shop is open to those who want to matriculate in metal manipulation. His YouTube video has almost half a million views, more than enough to keep him from axing his axe making. Crafting mines in metal, Jim wants to craft a voyage, an exploration, destination Norway, the Viking home. Jim Austin, blacksmith, axe maker, teacher, American, Viking.